If I had to start a new free-to-play account today, my first priority would be to get a solid premium ship to grind credits with. Tier 5, Tier 6, Tier 7, they are great for grinding, but Tier 7 is king due to a 55% credit earning bonus. Now there are some caveats to this I want to break down, so stay tuned because it's not all rainbows and unicorns at Tier 7, especially if you're not an amazing player yet. If you are competent though, there is a ship that stands out at Tier 7 that is attainable for free and it is heavily slept on. It's called Piotr Bagration, it's a Soviet heavy cruiser, available for 750,000 global XP in the store, so it's free to earn if you are patient enough and don't waste your GXP. Peter is a Giga Chad cruiser, and yeah, for the rest of the video, <laughs> we're gonna do its English pronunciation. Basically, Peter Bagration. Anyways, it's a Giga Chad cruiser, long range radar, sonar, good AA, and a decent torpedo armament. And it has pretty good guns to boot. Really, the ship can do everything well, and it would be my top recommendation for a tier 7 global XP cruiser, followed by Suzuya, and then mm, we'll go down the list later on in the video. Today though, we're gonna take the Bagration out for exactly two games and net around 1.8 million silver to try to prove our point. My ship setup, aiming systems one, propulsion, concealment, and the reload module. Stats wise, we've been able to hold our own solo, although some of these stats may be pre-buff. And while we're here, I wanted to point out the armor. There is a lot of 25 millimeters of armor you have to be careful about. This is no Baltimore. However, the icebreaker and the aft armor belt are a nice touch and a brawl. They could save your life from a captain who doesn't know about them. My ship commander is Kuznetsov. The only semi-controversial thing here is maybe not taking intuitive in skill slot 2, which is a really, really cool perk. It'll give you that RPF finder to let you know where the nearest enemy ship is. Otherwise, pretty standard DPM build, and we're using Makawa and Mimbelli. Entirely free to play. So free to play ship, free to play commander and inspirations, and it is absolutely solid. All right, so one major glaring issue with my evil plan here. Tier seven, after all, is high tier. So if you suck at the game, your results may vary if you're trying to grind credits up here. One of the reasons why is ship service costs. Every time you take a ship out of your port, it's gonna cost you, and the higher tiers are more expensive. Legendary tier, for instance, it costs 200,000 silver every time you sail out of port. Tier seven is kind of a sweet spot though, and we're gonna throw some uh, numbers up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. A tier seven premium will only set you back around 95,000 silver when you take it out of port. But look at tier five. It only costs you 25,000 silver to take a premium out of port. Keep that number in the back of your head, we'll come back to it. So if you're trying to grind silver at tier seven and maybe you're a new player, well, there's a solid chance you're not going to earn very much and you might even lose silver if you're having really, really bad games. In that case, I would recommend you drop down to tier five and find a premium ship there. Unfortunately though, there are no global XP ships at tier five, so you're going to have to buy one, in which case I would recommend T-61 as a destroyer, Warspite and Hyuga are powerful battleships, and Duca de Asta is an incredible cruiser, probably the best cruiser at tier five. And there you could grind against easier opponents in a little smaller pond, I would say, with smaller fish. And the best thing is if you play poorly at tier five, the service cost isn't going to eat you alive. Now, with all of that out of the way, if you're a decent player and you know how to play cruisers, p is where it's at. And, uh, Hopefully we'll prove that today. This ship has all the tools you could possibly need. Speaking of tools, we should have had the AP loaded, but now we have it loaded <laughs> and we should make the Otago pay here. One thing that annoys me in replays, like you go watch someone do a replay on YouTube and they get 300,000 damage. Well, you can almost bet that there is gonna be a lot of paid actors when that happens. And Otago here in this instance is a bit of a paid actor because Homeboy's gonna come back across here and you'll see what I mean. But anyways, I kind of get annoyed when I watch replays because I'm like, anybody could do that, you know? If someone's going to be broadside the whole match to allow you to get 200k, okay, that's, that's great. <laughs> it's not that fun to watch. So I do apologize for this Otago, but after this guy, uh, the match really heats up. It is a heavy DD match for destroyers and this is the perfect cruiser to be in when you have games like that. 
Speaking of destroyers, would I choose P-Bag over a destroyer for grinding? Because there are some good global XP DDs at tier 7, the Friesland, and the Loyang. And yeah, I probably would. I think in credit earning potential, sorry, I don't know if you can hear my dog barking in the other room, probably a squirrel in the backyard. Uh, security threat. Anyways, yeah, in uh, credit earning potential, I would pick a cruiser over a DD and then I would put a battleship in last place. I feel like if you're a good cruiser player, you can easily earn the most credits in a cruiser. Otago's gonna go down in one more salvo. The AP on P-Bag is pretty good, and that was a fast 48,000 damage, I suppose. We took a pretty aggressive position in this, this cap here because there was no battleship to contest me, and we popped a radar early on to make sure I wasn't sailing into a destroyer crossfire. But yeah, now we pretty much own this cap and uh, we can be aggressive. These heavy DD matches is something that is, is going on a lot right now at the end of the Lucian campaign. And it's, it's always annoying when there is a DD campaign and there are a ton of destroyers on each team and most of them are poorly played. Well, I say when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> Instead of complaining about it, just get in a radar cruiser and go have some banger games. I tell you what, Lucian, with its effective HP pool, those big heals, you could get some serious XP. Kill a couple noob Lucians in a match, and yeah, watch your XP numbers rack up. Uh, we didn't get the kill on Colorado, but we should get the kill on Azerlane Yukikaze here. His torpedoes are visible from space, oh, and I didn't get the kill there either. Darn it. Anyways, <laughs> we're slowing down and turning in for torpedoes, but Azerlane Yukikaze is one of those DDs that has like an 1800 meter or 2000 meter torpedo detection range. I don't know, it's terrible. So yeah, really wasn't worried about getting torped there. Speaking of Azerlane Yukikaze, is that another one? Huh. So we have this side of the map. We're going to sail to the middle and hey, there's another Piotr Bag Ration. Seeing this ship out in the wild, it's still not a ship that I give a lot of respect to. And I should, but the reason I don't is because when Pieter Bagration first came to Wowzel, it was bad. <laughs> it first came to the game in September 2021. It did not have radar, it had an 11 second reload, and a little less health. I remember vividly watching the Wargaming community team playing it on stream, and of course they have to tout the ship, you know, talk about the strengths and all of that stuff, and watching it, it just looked so out of place, it looked terrible. It's not a brawler, it's not a good spammer, and without radar it really didn't have any utility. Funnily enough, that is the exact update that I became an official community contributor. What I can't remember though is if they gave me the ship, because when I think back on it, I might not have paid for the Admiralty backing on this ship because it was so bad. I'm glad I did though, and it's a good lesson. Ships can get buffed, you know, campaign ships, they can be really bad when they come out. And why am I not shooting AP here? This is such an easy kill, Durka. Oh man, I suppose I'm more distracted by the black and I want to make sure that we have HE loaded for him. But yeah, this was such an easy kill. So this is totally my fault. Anyways, it proves a point. You know, you should maybe, I don't want to say always pick up the campaign ship, but for 2,500 doubloons, would you rather run the risk of a ship coming back and getting buffed and becoming very, very good? I mean, it's happened a lot. More campaigns than I can remember. Flanders been buffed. Champagne. Turpitz has been buffed. Heason's been buffed. I believe Azuma, B43, and on and on. So the last thing I want is, um, you know, to miss out on a campaign ship. Plus, at this point in the game, I'm kind of a collector, so I'm probably just going to collect them all. But yeah, this ship was a uh, garbage upon release. Since then, though, a radar has been added. Its duration buffed to 23 seconds. The reload lowered to 10 seconds. AP pin increased 15%. Sigma buffed 5% and 1,000 health added. So this ship has got some really great buffs heavy buffs, and it's made her quietly sail into a really competitive slot in this game. The guns are super, super good. If you've played up the Soviet heavy cruiser line with ships like Riga and Talon, you'll have a good feel for what these guns can do. They're beautiful at melting cruisers, ask the Otago if they're sailing broadside, <laughs> especially with that buffed AP pin. And the gun ballistics are really good. 
as I can hopefully prove it on this black over here. You have good fast shells and flat trajectories, and that makes it easy to hit opponents at longer ranges. I think we only got one pin there. We'll see if I can finish this guy off here. And also, we're just trying to uh, make sure I don't get torped by the other black over here in the middle. Yes, we got him. Okay. Let's pop the radar and let's see just how accurate we can be against small, agile ships. Ian with love uh, sent me a Discord message after this. His team definitely fell apart on him and there's not much you can do, so GG's, Ian. But yeah, with an American cruiser like Baltimore or Cleveland, shots like this might be a little more difficult, especially at maybe longer ranges than 7 or 8 km. But with a Soviet cruiser, unless the dispersion's bad, you're really not going to miss. So the aiming with this ship is really, really good, and it makes it a good destroyer hunter. I think the AP, mm, 930 meters per second, that's how fast it goes, so very fast. And the HE is 920 meters per second, at least on PC, so those are really good shell velocities. To make it better, the gun range is massive for a cruiser. <laughs> 16 kilometers stock. Just out of curiosity, I added the range module and I put beyond range on there with Kuznetsov and it was a kind of stupid 19.5 kilometers. And I definitely wouldn't recommend ever playing a radar cruiser at 20 kilometers, that's silly. They need to be played a little closer, kind of like I did over on ACAP and then in the middle of the map. What are destroyers going to do when there's a radar cruiser right in the middle of the map? It makes it uh, not that fun. Speaking of destroyers, one of them has snuck into A here. I don't think it's the black, it might be the other guy. So we're gonna pop out of this smoke screen, all sneaky like, and hopefully catch him with his pants down. This smoke screen was perfect. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> it was beautiful. It got me away from the battleship over there on the flank and let me come and hunt these destroyers like I should be doing. Let's see, where's he at? There he is. The turret traverse isn't really that bad. The, uh, I feel like the accuracy is kind of trolling me here. Only two pins at four kilometers. Hmm. Maybe that was my fault. A little bit better there. A little bit better. Yeah, all right. So we'll be able to get this guy off the board, and then we can go back to hunting the black, and that should wrap up this match. With all of the damage against DDs, though, and, you know, part of the damage against the cruiser, this should be a pretty high XP and high credit earning match. The ship does have torpedoes, though, and they're not bad. Two by five kilometers. There's Black's torpedoes. They are very slow. But yeah, two by five. They're not amazing. They're kind of slow at 55 knots, and they have a pretty long reload. But at least they're eight kilometer torpedoes. Anyone who has played the light Soviet cruiser line and has <laughs> played the shores in the Shopy Ev, man, how useless are four kilometer torpedoes? Very, very useless. So yes, on PBEG here, they're eight kilometers. It's kind of a nice, um, a nice thing if battleships are pushing you, you just have more options. I did call the AA decent, and it is. It isn't bad in the damage per second department. It's in 13th place at tier seven out of 37 ships. I think there are 37 cruisers. I believe I have every cruiser at tier seven, except maybe the Otago Black. But still, I mean, that is in the upper percentile of uh, AA. Not bad. Now, I don't know anything about like the flak bursts because I, I don't have a way to really look up that information. But for continuous DPS, it's really not bad. Anyways, maybe one more salvo here and we'll get Ian out of the game. GG's. And let's see how much credits, how many credits we earned here. We picked up the high cal, very low high cal with all the DDs here. But uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Now the ship does have drawbacks and I'm gonna get to that in the next match here. But let's just see how many credits we earned. 964,000, not too shabby, 37 base. Pretty good. And it just goes to show what can happen when you hunt DDs. And we'll jump into our next match. Trident, I love this map. I wish I got it more. It is so fun. You're right into the action early on. Yeah, speaking of which, we're going to turn out early because of the drawbacks of this ship. And it does have them. Part of them, the concealment and the maneuverability. They're both bad. In typical Soviet fashion, this ship has a garbage turning circle of 890 meters. Funnily enough, the only ships, of course, that are worse than it are also Soviet. The Shapayev has the same turn circle of 890 meters. And then, of course, poor old Riga 
<laughs> is tied with the Azuma at the worst at tier seven, 920 meters. So it's an annoying feature of Soviet cruisers, but something that you would just have to get used to. Edinburgh, let's test the AP on him. Now, I should have known that he was going to stop and smoke up, but honestly, Edinburgh is one of those cruisers that more often than not, it's played as a radar cruiser because it has 30 millimeters of armor. That's like battleship armor. I don't think I would play it with smoke anymore, you know, now knowing what it is. Sure, Minotaur, Neptune, all of those, yeah. But anyways, that's why I kept the uh, salvo where I did and I thought we would punish him. But maybe we'll catch up to him later with some AP and see how it does. The rudder shift is also not very good on this ship. I think it's like 10 seconds so dodging against uh, CVs. It's, it's going to be pretty hard in this ship. It is fast in a straight line, though, 34.5 knots. That's really good for a tier 7 cruiser, and it helps a lot later game to get across the match, to get across the map. Like last game, we were able to go from our spawn to the middle and then kind of back towards our spawn. So the speed is, is pretty nice. Okay, so once again, we have radar. We're going to try to get close to the cap and protect our destroyer here. And with that long range 11.7 .7 kilometer radar, we should be able to get this Edinburgh if he's still chilling there. Someone's contesting the cap. Let's find out who it is. It's a Fletcher. Okay, and then yes, we have Edinburgh here. So we're going to scare him out of his smoke screen and hopefully pick up a couple Citadel hits if dispersion plays nice. There's one, not too shabby. Talking about the poor maneuverability is kind of foreshadowing because I, I honestly get myself into a little bit of trouble here. <laughs> and you might realize the same point that I do that, uh oh, it could be in trouble. This isn't the best brawler because of the maneuverability. And when some of these ships get close, like if Edinburgh had decided to just rush me and I didn't have the DD here to protect me, yeah, we could have been in a heap of trouble. The concealment is another drawback of this ship. It's not Shoppe Ev bad. Shoppe has a 14.3 kilometer detection radius. That's terrible. <laughs> Peters is 13.3. So it's it's not bad, but it definitely could be worse. And the situation I'm going to get myself into is getting positioned locked. And it's something that Soviet cruisers can can get into because of the poor maneuverability and the concealment. If you get too close too early, you might be unable to get away and you're just going to have to reverse out. Please, Mr. Destroyer, don't eat that torpedo. Oh, boy. Hey, okay. we definitely kind of need him to stay alive for the spotting. And let's see if we can snake the black kill all the way across the map here. This smokescreen is actually going to end up biting us in the butt as our destroyer gets himself killed because our smoke firing penalty is really bad. And I'm going to keep shooting as this uh, Italian cruiser comes across the middle of the map and rushes me and it's going to get me spotted. And honestly, that was just a bad play on my part. But it's about the time that I start panicking <laughs> because, you know, if you have a ship like that bearing down on you with sap, I don't know if he's using sap. We'll find out here shortly. That's a pretty good brawler and pea bag really isn't. Let's throw some torps down first to see if we can kind of distract him. And then we need to be reversing because the Vladivostok is over there. And that's why I was kind of hiding behind this island because of the Vlad's heavy AP. That salvo right there was what I was trying to avoid, but we got a little too far forward. So let's get back behind the cover of this island and then we can try to kill the Ferruccio here at our own leisure. Of course, we're going to be spotted and he's going to be getting closer and closer and closer. He does have HE. That's kind of a godsend because Sap is brutal up close. If you guys have ever done the brawl mode with cruisers and taken out the Abruzzi or the Duca de Asta or something like that, Sap is brutal in 1v1 cruiser engagements. Anyways, let's keep backing up to safety away from the Vladivostok. We still have a Bismarck over here. I'm surprised he's alive, to be honest. He did some good torpedo dodging there. But yeah, backing up into safety. So we established cruisers are the best credit earners in the game. Tier seven is the best tier in the game to earn credits. So what about the other global XP ships? Well, there are a few other options as we get the devastating strike on this guy. <laughs> Don't show broadside to anything with Soviet AP. So the other cruisers, Suzuya, Kuchizov, Azuma, Atago, and then the Sad Prince Wagon. And in that order, that is the exact order that I would pick them up in. I would put Peabag number one because of its ability to carry games. 
Suzuya, I would put in next place though. That is the ultimate DPM monster, the ultimate fire spammer. Even if you don't have Azerlane Otago, Suzuya is very, very good. I think it's top five for HE DPM. It's a wiggly little boat with one of the fastest rudder shifts, if not the fastest cruiser rudder shift at tier seven. So it's very good. It is super lightly armored though, and you're you're unable to push and be aggressive, and that can mean you're reliant on your teammates, but still, big torpedo armament, very fun. After that, I would probably place the Kuchizov. Again, another Soviet cruiser with amazing guns, rail guns, 12 of them. Okay, our Bismarck died, but that's fine. We're just gonna go ahead and go for the brawl on Vladdy here. I was hoping his poor maneuverability and um, slow turret traverse would save me from getting yeeted here, but let's see if we can angle. We didn't angle good enough, I'll say that. <laughs> but with his long reload now, there's really nothing that he can do. He is dead. And yeah, this torpedo armament came in handy, although even a Shapayev could get the torp kill at this point. But yeah, Vladdy's down and that just leaves two more reds left. They're both in the middle of the map though, so that's gonna give us a pretty good chance to clean up those kills and earn some more silver. Anyways, Kuchizov. It's a smoke Soviet cruiser, which is pretty rare, very rare. The only other one that I can think of even on PC is the Smolensk. So that's a really, really good ship. High DPM, Soviet railguns, good torps. Yeah, I would put that in next place. After that, the Azuma. Azuma is still very, very strong, and it occupies kind of a unique slot as like this uh, battle cruiser, this small, lightly armored battleship at tier seven. Super accurate, improved pin angles for the AP, I believe. A fun, fun boat. I would absolutely put the Azuma up there. After that, Otago. I, I rate the Otago low because I think the Mogami's better. The Mogami DPM has been buffed here recently again, and I, I feel like it's just better. Although Otago has a really low freeboard and some cool armor, some heavier armor and good torpedo firing angles. So it's not all bad. Otago's fun. She's fast. She's stealthy. I have a recent review on her, I do believe, maybe in the fall or the winter. You can go check that out. But the one thing that I would put in last place is the Prince Eugen because the Hipper is just miles, miles better. If there were any ship that needed buffed after the Grocer Kerr first got her buff, I would say it's Prince Eugen. Give that ship the ability to use the reload booster and sonar at the same time and only make that change. Only make that change and I think it would be fine. Hipper would still be the DPM monster, you know, uh, comparatively with the faster reload and the better AP shells, I believe. But yeah, that would help out. All right, we caught the Udachi in the middle here with our lovely radar. So we should be able to clean up another destroyer in this video, and that is going to help our XP earnings. We talk about global XP a lot on this channel, I feel like. And honestly, it's because at heart, I am a free to play player. If I wasn't a community contributor, I would still probably be mostly free to play. I would buy the Admiralty backings and things like that. And actually I'm grinding on PC right now as a free to play player. And so I love global XP. On this game, World of Warship Legends, it gives you the opportunity to get some great ships without spending tons and tons of money. So yeah, I feel like I put a lot of emphasis on GXP ships, but it's just where my heart is. <laughs> I'm cheap, <laughs> all right? I have other hobbies and I don't want to waste a ton of money on this game. Anyways, that is the Peter Bagration. Let's see how many credits we earned in this one. 800,000. So yeah, total combined for both of these games, about 1.8 million credits. Not too shabby. I would absolutely recommend this ship if you're looking for a GXP cruiser and you need something to grind credits with. Anyways, that is the video. This is Dirk signing off. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.